It is possible to be a documentary photographer and in the same breath be a compassionate human being. I believe it is knowing when to act and when not to. I trust my gut, my intuition. Life is about being present. been six years since I've seen Catherine and her children, Sebastian and Chantelle. It's often haunted me how they've coped. I have a deep affection for these children and their mother, and I know they've had a rough time. I often wondered if there was more I could have done. I first met and became friends with Catherine 12 years ago in the western desert of Australia when I was working on my book Conversations with the Mob. It was an eight year assignment. She was a mother in her 20s, beautiful, intelligent and courageous. Her son Sebastian then was about 15 months old and her daughter Chantelle only a month old. Chantelle and Sebastian were four and five, Catherine had a psychotic episode after experimenting with marijuana. Life has never been the same for Catherine since, and nor especially for her children. I cared for Catherine for three months every day when she first went to hospital in a traumatic state. This was a terribly distressing time for the children but due to my close relationship with the family, I was asked to care for them during this time. It's an expensive exercise to travel to remote places in the Australian desert. The distances are huge and the cost of fuel is high. Three spare tyres are needed in case of flats and the corrugation on the sandy tracks takes its toll. Over the last four days I've driven nearly 3,000 kilometres to get to Alice Springs in Central Australia where I've tracked Catherine down. She's trying to get her life back together but the children are not with her in town and Catherine hasn't seen them for several months. I discovered they're out in a remote central desert community being cared for by Tillo, Catherine's elderly mother and extended family members. With Catherine's help, we take a chance and drive out to the community, a 1,000 kilometre round trip over unsealed roads to find the children. In Aboriginal culture, time flows differently and people often don't stay in one spot for too long. So there was no way of telling if the children would actually be there when we arrived. As we drive along this corrugated and dusty road, I understand this journey is as much for me as it is for Catherine and her often tortured mind and the connection we have together. I stopped along the way often to take in the tremendous beauty of the landscape. It's something I never tire of. It's breathtaking. I feel incredibly grateful in this moment for many reasons. One of them being that for the first time in a long time, I have a camera that I know has all the qualities I've been looking for to document this special journey. The Fuji X-T1 is unobtrusive, lightweight, and the image quality is so impressive.
So it's been a, a pretty good trip out. So I've noticed as we travelled out, Catherine's getting happier. It's coming out to her, her home country, but as we arrived, I didn't want to get out and, and be part of her meeting with her mother because it's something that's very personal for her and she hasn't seen her for a while and it's something that could be a bit emotional. So those are the sort of things you just got to use your intuition and, and just common sense and give people a bit of respect and a bit of space. When you spend years working and living with people, it is a great privilege in many ways, but it also comes at a big cost and with a tremendous sense of responsibility. I think many of us wonder what motivates others to do what they do in life. For me, there is a great sense that whoever we are and wherever we are in this world, underneath all our cultural conditionings and personal beliefs, we're all the same and deserve the same respect. When I look at a picture of someone, I want to feel like I know them, not just know about them. Being really present with someone creates a deep rapport. It goes beyond just the thought. Having a car and camp is a great opportunity in the mob's eyes. Tilo was really happy that we could go out hunting that day. She grew up hunting and she loves it. And all the old people know how important a bush tucker food is. In the desert, there is no such thing as a fly on the wall experience. Flies are irritating and they get noticed. To really know people, you need to live with them, experience their life, to be with them. This gives acceptance and therefore a greater depth of understanding. For me, the healthy balance is to be in it, but not of it. And this way, there is insight and compassion, but not blind emotion. Seeing the children for the first time in six years makes my heart swell. I feel so lucky to see them again and to see that in spite of all their life difficulties, they are happy and resilient and find joy in their world. When I document children, I often take pictures that I won't use, but I know it keeps them happy. When they lose interest in what I'm doing, that's when I'm able to document them in their daily lives. It's important for me to have a camera that feels like an extension of myself, that is subtle and can stand up to all the elements, especially the heat, dust and the wet. The images from this camera are simply amazing. The prints blew me away. In order to know when to act and when not to requires some wisdom. In my limited way, I practice mindfulness. This helps me to see a space around what is and what isn't. I am more interested in capturing how people feel about their world, not necessarily always recording what they do in their world. they still know that I care about them. When I drive out of the desert, I'm leaving behind the country, but my heart doesn't leave. <laughs> <laughs>